This is one of my favorite budget dual band handheld radios. It's from a company called Waxon or Ocean. Some people pronounce it as that. It's the KG UV 3D 2 meter 440. It's also marketed as a commercial radio, so this will transmit outside of the 2 meter and 440 bands as long as you're authorized to use those and you have a license. This is great. It's about a hundred bucks, and what sets this apart from most of the competition, the price of the accessories for Skywarn operators for your entry-level ham radio operators, even the more experienced guys, and especially for emergency preppers, the prep lifestyle, having multiple ways to power a radio when traditional power is not available. You can get a AA battery pack for this thing between 10 and 15 bucks. You can get a power eliminator, battery eliminator it's called, that actually allows you to plug in and power this thing straight from your car's cigarette adapter that's about 12 to 14 bucks on Amazon you can get a cheap speaker mic for this thing with the universal Kenwood adapter it's about 10 to 15 bucks for a waterproof speaker mic online so dirt cheap accessories for this thing now this is not a top of the line APX Motorola handheld it's not meant for rigorous heavy duty daily commercial use but it gets the job done for most of ham radio's purpose for preppers for a backup radio I've even taken this thing on a storm chasing trip this is pretty cool let me talk a little bit about what I like about it so this comes with everything you need it's actually got a drop-in charger and a decent 1700 milliamp battery now this does have 76 to 108 FM radio receive which was kinda nice and it gave me a chance to test this as I left it on overnight in a tent by accident and it still didn't deplete the battery. So this thing was running for a good 14 to 16 hours listening to the radio at about a quarter of the volume. Now this can get pretty loud at about 500 milliwatts. It's a decent speaker. It's got an IP55 waterproof rating, but I wouldn't dunk it in any significant amount of water for a long time. I would more consider this splash proof. So if you're out in the rain a little bit, it should be all right. But you're gonna wanna make sure all those ports are covered and definitely don't take off the battery pack or anything else when you're out in the rain. This is pretty cool, again, because of the dirt cheap accessories. I also like the fact that the programming cable is dirt cheap, about 10 to 14 bucks online. And you can use, just like most Waxon products, the Chirp software. That's programming software. It's a free download online. We'll put the link in the description in our article and in the video. But you want to first make sure you have the USB cable nice and snug into your PC and into the speaker mic jack on the Waxon handheld. Once you have that done, you're going to want to do a read. This downloads the data from the radio to the software screen just to make sure there's communication there. Once you've done that and it's working, make your entries. It's very similar to Excel. And then you hit Write to Radio. Some people report that on the 3D model, you actually select 1D in the communication area so make sure you do that other than that chirp has great support for many radios out there and I'm always a big fan of free open source software here's a few other things I like about the radio nice backlit DTMF keypad not a lot of auto patch operations around anymore but it still serves a purpose and it's nice to have that especially for ham radio for experimentation and stuff like that CTCSS DCS all that good stuff on here. It is a digital squelch, you can set that, but there's no de dedicated analog squelch knob up here. Some people don't like that, but again, this is the way of the future. Most manufacturers are doing that these days. You also have two programmable function keys. This is the PTT button, nice big. Able to use that probably with gloves too. I like to see these slightly bigger, but that'll work. This is the battery release back here. A nice drop-in chargers included with the 1700 milliamper battery. Decent, for the most part, belt clip on it. You've got a standard, I believe it's Kenwood style, speaker microphone jack there. This is also where you'll put the uh, software programming cable into, but it's about 10 to 15 bucks. You can find a nice speaker mic or programming cable dirt cheap online anywhere. So change the backlight colors that's kind of cool nice good display that you can see in the sunlight which was nice something that sets it apart from the 9d series and 8d series that was awful receive and transmit led this is a kind of flashlight led up here a little white light i guess for camping purposes that's kind of cool to be able to use that 
but the SOS function of loud noise and flashy light facing towards the operator kind of blinds you when you're trying to see the screen on it so I'm not so big on that split band operation here alphanumeric tagging that's kind of nice 128 memories I usually use it in single mode just because you can only transmit on one frequency at a time doesn't have cross band repeat but fairly good receive on this and the range again once this is unlocked is 136 to 174 megahertz on the VHF side and 420 to 520 on the UHF side. The VHF side on high power there's only two options high power and low power. High is 5 watts and low is 1 watt. On the UHF side you only get about 4 watts out of this so that's kind of nice. Very easy to get into the menu. Hit the menu key if this is unlocked. It's field programmable from the front Panel. That's what this is here. So you can go through all of the menu options. Set this digital squelch, set the power, all that good stuff. Roger beep, I'm not sure too many people using that. Timeout timer, voice operated relay, lots of nice things in here. This is part 90 certified. It's grandfathered in. It's not one of the newer models with the, for some of you guys doing the Civil Air Patrol approved list, they look for the 2.5 kilohertz steps on that. So this might not work for that, but volunteer fire departments, very rural areas, just as a personal listen only, not to use all the time for commercial purposes. This might serve that purpose well, but overall it's better for primarily ham radio. I would say for Skywarn type stuff, for just having a ham radio, for starting out with it, things like that. Again, 128 memories. It would be nice to have some more memory. Pretty good receive here, stock antenna, reverse SMA, as is typical for a lot of these models. So make sure if you do get a different antenna that you have the right connector for it. So make sure also that this is nice and snug in there. So this is water resistant. I wouldn't dunk this in the water but out in the rain it should be okay. And as you can see I have a lot of things programmed into here, some of my favorite frequencies here. I actually use this on a storm chasing trip, but overall it's pretty cool. You can go into, for example, VFO mode. Very easy to do, so you don't have to spend too much time in the owner's manual learning this stuff. Put it in frequency, we're going to hit the menu button again. Here we are in VFO mode. One of the things I like to do to test the receive of a new radio, the sensitivity, how well it is, is to manually tune in some of these NOAA weather radio frequencies. Pretty good there. So anyways, pretty cool little radio here. It's in VFO mode. Easy to scan. You just hold down the scan button. It's not so fast, but I wouldn't call this a scanner because it's not that fast, but it can scan a couple of uh, memory channels. So other than that, it's a pretty cool VHF UHF radio at about a hundred bucks. Great budget radio with really dirt cheap accessories. You can't beat the price on this. It's not top of the line receive or transmit or functionality. It doesn't have APRS. It's not digital. It's analog only, but it definitely does the trick. It would be great for prepping with all those power dirt cheap options, the battery eliminator, the AA battery pack for it, all the cheap universal accessories, great for prepping for Skywarn stuff. So a few recommendations for the manufacturer if anybody from Walks On, the company, is actually listening here. First of all, it'd be really cool given the hobby market if you were to include AM aircraft received in one package on a future 3D or whatever the next model is gonna be. If you can keep the same price range that would be awesome a lot of people want that 108 to 135 megahertz am receive the other thing i would add here is a two-tone five-tone paging capability especially if you're going to keep this for the commercial market for volunteer fire departments and things like that having that ability is kind of nice although i don't see it too important at this point another thing would be improving the build quality the design overall of the belt clip maybe make that onto the radio itself rethink some of the plastic versus metal chassis issues on this thing other than that it's pretty good again I like the fact that you have dirt cheap accessories for this thing 
and it meets almost up to its specs. A lot of the other radio manufacturers, especially the cheap ones from China, mention all kinds of specs and it looks good on paper, but once you actually test it and get it out in the field, it's nowhere near that. So this signal meter also, more accurate signal meter, it seems to just kind of show either there or not there. So that'd be kind of neat to improve that slightly more accurate, maybe slightly better receive, add that AM aircraft receive capability and I think you've got something that's even more marketable to more ham radio operators, especially if you can keep it in the same price range. So I definitely recommend the Waxon Ocean KGUV 3D dual band handheld. Okay, so thanks for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, check out our new social media, follow us, share our articles, all that good stuff. Stay tuned. We'll do some giveaways coming up fairly soon. And check out ultratechlife.com.